Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. There are new details tonight in the internal investigation of Fargo Police Officer David Belkey and claims that he lied during the investigation and is being wrongfully fired. Documents released by Officer Belkey's attorney blast Police Chief David Todd, the internal investigators, and Chief Todd's subordinates who allegedly initiated the complaint and subsequent investigation. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric has been following this story. He joins us now. Bradford? In an information dump today, Belkey's attorney, Mark Fries, tells us his client stands accused of lying during an internal affairs investigation, not filing paperwork, and not responding to calls for service while out on patrol. Those documents say Belkey failed to show up for a court date where a speeding ticket was being contested. That triggered the internal investigation where a review of Belkey's work was conducted. Based on that review, department higher-ups said Belkey lacked empathy and had an unwillingness to investigate further on calls. One deputy chief even said he should be fired. Belkey's attorney calls these, quote, trumped up allegations against the 15-year veteran who served at the DAPL protests as president of the, of the Fraternal Order of Police and who also received a life-saving award. The attorney points out that part of the evidence against Belkey is GPS data, and the program generating that data has been shown to say the car was stationary when in fact it was moving. He also asks Chief Todd to reject the findings of this investigation, in part because of this faulty computer software used in the patrol cars. Officer Belkey said during the questioning as part of the investigation that he returned to do some follow-up investigation on a call. The GPS data did not show it, and he was then accused of lying. Mike, Andrea. All right, thanks, Bradford. Now, last night, the head of the State Fraternal Order of Police came out in support of Belkey. Grant Benjamin echoed his support today, saying that Officer Belkey will be cleared of these accusations, again in part because of the faulty GPS data being used as evidence. Also, we just received the results of the internal affairs investigation from the Fargo Police Department. That report will be up on valleynewslive.com shortly, and we'll summarize it for you tonight on Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW and Valley News Live 10 at 10. In other news tonight, emergency crews are responding after a car crashed into a Walmart store in Grand Forks. Officials confirmed the crash happened at 32nd Avenue South location just before 4 p.m. today. One customer was transported by ambulance to Altru for unknown injuries due to flying debris and other refused, another refused medical treatment at the scene. Now, the preliminary investigation indicates that the crash was a result of mechanical failure of the vehicle. A lot of people are liking these cooler temps. If they stick around, it'll be a nice stretch of weather. Let's find out from Justin about our Friday night conditions. Justin? And thank you, Andrea and Mike, and good evening, everybody. Yeah, we're not that bad out there as we go through this evening. We will see those light northerly winds keeping temperatures comfortable. 76 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Temperatures falling through the 70s as we go through this evening with some showers possible well to the north and to the east of Fargo. The Fargo area itself staying dry as temperatures drop into the upper 60s as we go through the 9 p.m. hour as we will keep partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies and have a cool overnight period. As for those showers, it looks like they're developing in portions of northwestern Minnesota into the New Folden, Thief River Falls, Red Lake Falls area, and just south of Roseau. But most of us are staying dry. You might see a uh, brief heavy rain shower with some lightning out of these. Now we have more chances for some rain, some beneficial rain, especially across the state of North Dakota. We'll tell you when that's going to happen coming up a little later on in the newscast. All right, that sounds good. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. The majority of people paying for sex are married white men, according to a new study done by the University of Minnesota. Their data shows it's average, everyday looking men with some disposable money, typically from 30 to 50 years old. However, authorities say it has less to do with age and race, saying it's a reflection of the community. We can't completely stop prostitution, just like we can't completely stop drunken driving, we can't stop speeding, but we can intervene in the most victimized areas, which is the juvenile stuff and the traffic people. And that's our goal. The study also finds Backpage.com is the most common way people are buying sex. This week, Senator Heidi Heitkamp helped introduce a bill to hold websites like Backpage.com accountable for their role in sex trafficking. 
The search continues tonight for a man who robbed a Grand Forks hotel. It happened early this morning at the Spring Hill Suites off of 42nd Street. Police say an employee told them that a man wearing all white with his face covered came in during a power outage and used a note to demand money. The man is described as being around 5 feet 7 inches tall with a slim build. Anyone with information should call police at 701-787-8000. We've told you how people in Minnesota may see a slight increase or a drop in prices when it comes to health insurance. State regulators announcing preliminary premium rates and customers who buy insurance individually should see it take effect as early as October. Reporter John Croman has more on what this could mean for Minnesota residents. You know, first of all, we're on our third plan in three years. Woodbury suspense rider Brian Freeman's been on the wrong kind of thrill ride with health insurance with a 60% hike this year. Our existing plan dropped uh, our line of doctors, and the only way we could keep the doctors we've seen for the last 20 years was to switch over to a Blue Cross plan. Some better news for 2018. Projected rates from insurers show premiums dropping in the individual market or rising by much slower rates. It affects 170,000 people who aren't covered by employer group plans or public plans. If we're able to get a federal waiver approved in the next couple of months, people's premiums will look a lot better. This is in large part due to action by the legislature this year to create a backstop for insurers, a $600 million reinsurance fund to help cover customers with extremely high costs. It is the reinsurance program that is showing real impact on rates in the individual market. That's essential for Main Street, Minnesota. Of course, the insurance landscape could change dramatically if President Trump follows through on his idea of cutting off cost-sharing subsidies for states and insurers. It's a mess, and that's why we've all been watching TV a lot uh, and reading uh, the, the Internet a lot. Back to Brian Freeman. As a Blue Cross customer, he expects he'll still pay more next year because he won't have the rebate that the legislature provided in 2017. We're not dancing in the streets. Uh, at <laughs> Sign-ups to buy individual coverage for 2018 begin November 1st. Minsure announced it had secured an extension to allow sign-ups to continue through January 14th. Tonight, Bruno Mars, a multi-platinum recording artist, hits the stage at the Fargo Dome. We want to show you a live look in North Fargo as fans are filing into the parking lot. Doors are going to open in a little over 20 minutes. More than 18,000 people are expected to attend this sold-out show. Fargo Dome officials want to remind you that there's going to be a high volume of pedestrian traffic crossing streets leading to the dome. So if you're driving in that area, you're asked to use caution. And after the concert, if you're coming to pick someone up, wait until the bulk of the traffic has left the parking lot so you can get to the front of the building. Once again, WeFest is in full swing. The Sioux Pass Ranch can hold up to 50,000 people a day and 35,000 campers. This year is the 35th anniversary of the music festival. Organizers say they're proud of creating one of the leading country music festivals in the nation. The big artist ending the festival on Saturday is Luke Bryan. While country music fans are gathering by the thousands in Detroit Lakes, hundreds of thousands of motorcyclists are flocking to another event that draws national attention. This one in South Dakota. Today marks the first day of the 77th annual motorcycle rally in Sturgis. The population of South Dakota is expected to double during the rally. Of course, that means more traffic. Speed limits around Sturgis has been have been reduced for safety precautions, and temporary stoplights have also been added. That rally runs through Sunday, August 13th. This next one is for all you donut lovers out there. Sandy's Donuts posted to its Facebook page earlier today that starting August 20th, they'll be open on Sundays at both Fargo locations. The stores will be open at their usual times, but will be closing at 1.30 in the afternoon on Sundays. After a devastating injury, life is returning to normal for a local teenager. We'll update her story later on Valley News Live at 6. And we were cool this morning, a low of 47, a high near 80, a little below normal for this time of year. Temperatures are going to stay around this area for the next seven days. All well, the details coming up next.